orders, Lanyon, to pick you up. I had very special plans for that night. But when government men pay an evening visit, you don't ask questions. You just go. I don't know. I paid my income tax. I hadn't padded my expenses. And the only mail I'd read was my own. The big man didn't send for you unless it was important. Remember that bank robbery in Boston? The take was almost $2 million? Well, not a cent of that money has ever turned up. Where is it? Where are the half million dollars worth of diamonds that disappeared in Mexico City? How did the men who pulled off that job in Vancouver get away without a trace? Well, we know, or we can guess, who well, most of them are. But where's the loot? Where are they? Did you expect me to have the answer? Do you? No. It's a very strange problem, Lanyard. I've never heard of anything like it. Why did you send for me? Well, all we know is that the top criminals are disappearing. It's our job to keep track of them. But they vanish, and we ask ourselves, what are they doing? What are they planning to do? Where have they gone? Why did you send for me? You aren't quite a stranger to them, are you? We've got an agent in New York named Jack Anson. Now, he knows how to get in touch with you, and I've told him to report if he has anything to report. A man's life just isn't his own these days. Jack Anson, huh? I admit it sounds very interesting. Okay, I'll play along. Anson had already been taken to the morgue. I found the key that Anson had left. It looked like any ordinary key, except on one side it had the initial CML, and on the other, good for one dance, Blue Lantern, New York. The Blue Lantern Cafe wasn't hard to find, nor was it anything very special. I took a deep breath and said to the bartender, I'm alone. I shouldn't be, not with this. I knew this very innocent looking key had killed at least one man. I wanted to know the answer. Hi, I'm Amy Lou. Don't you remember me, New Orleans? Why, of course. Amy Lou, New Orleans. How could I forget? How are you, Amy Lou? Kind of cozy in here, isn't it? You come here often? Huh? No, I, uh, I just arrived in town. Yeah? Huh? Well, listen, did you hear what happened to Maisie? You remember Maisie, don't you? That girl with the black hair died, of course. Had a sort of a mole right here. Sort of a scar on her back, way low down. You remember Maisie. Oh, sure, Maisie. So? So wait till I tell you. Hi, baby. Uh, Lou. Lou, this is... Michael Lanyard. I would have thought of it in a second. Lou Zapata. Hi. Mike's from New Orleans, Lou. We were just talking about Maisie. You remember Maisie, Lou. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Maisie. How do you like the giant, Lanyard? Huh? Oh, it's nice, quiet, and respectable. Strictly a joint. <laughs> Lanyard, you're really a funny guy. How long do you stay in New Orleans? Mm hmm? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a funny one, too. What kind of a while? A day? A week? Oh, it's hard to keep track of time, even with an alarm clock. <laughs> you know something? You're a character. Is that bad? <laughs> what made you come here all the way from New Orleans instead of going somewhere else? Little matter of an unfinished business. Unfinished business? Mm -hmm. hey, listen to him, baby. This guy's good for a laugh a minute. Oh, hello, Mr. Calvin. Hello. 
I hope you'll forgive the intrusion, but I had a feeling I'd seen you somewhere. Possibly. I've been somewhere. Do you own this place, Mr. Calhoun? Own it? No, I've only been here once or twice in my life. And now I better be going. Lou, Amy Lou. Lanyard, good night. What's the matter, honey? You look worried. Worried about something? No. I was just wondering how he knew my name. Oh? <laughs> I see. You didn't know Mr. Calvin was deaf, did you? So Mr. Calvin's deaf. Does that explain how he knew my name? He reads lips. Didn't you see him watching us when he was sitting over there? Sure. It's strange, though. What's strange, honey? Why does Mr. Calvin come to a place like this when he can't hear the music? Or maybe it sounds better when you can't hear it. <laughs> Baby, this guy's routine is strictly terrific. Let's get out of here and go to your place. Let's go, honey. Well, I'll stay a while. I like it here. Come on, pal. We'll like it better on the outside. Let's go. I guess it wouldn't be polite to refuse, would it, huh? Fresco. He's clean, Lou. No gun, not even a knife. <laughs> Can you imagine? He is a character. Take your coat off. For what reason? When I think of one, I'll let you know. And don't try anything ridiculous. Hey, baby, how do you like that ridiculous? Maybe I'm a character, too. Go on. With a lady present? Uh, don't mind me, honey. And let's not think about throwing that coat at me. Just drop it on the floor. Men, they're such slobs. Now what? Now go on over there and put your hands on the table. You never should have said that you knew that gal in New Orleans, honey, because I never even heard of her myself. <laughs> You're right, Lou. He is a character. Even gave his right name. Shut up, baby. We're going to get some answers out of this guy. Answers, Lou? All you need to do is ask. Okay, who are you working for? Nobody. Who sent you to the Blue Lantern? Nobody. Where'd you get the copper key? I don't remember. Where'd you get the copper key? You know something, Lou? I don't think we're ever really gonna be friends. I gotta catch a plane tonight, and I can't waste any more time. Tie his hands, baby. What are you waiting for, Lou? Why don't you get rid of him now? Shut up and do as I tell you. Amy Lou, you should never have reached for that gun. That's for a guy I never knew. Jack Anson. When I picked up Lou Zapata's gun, I found another copper key attached to it. Just like the one Jack Anson paid for with his life. But the other side was different. Instead of New York, Lou's was stamped New Orleans. The Blue Lander was a little quieter and a little darker than the one in New York. And it was a different girl. that we met before. Mexico City, San Francisco. You remember Conchita, don't you? Darling, what did you say your name was? Lillian. No, Lillian. I never saw you before. I never heard of a girl called Conchita. Though I admit she sounds interesting. I could be wrong. Do you want to dance? It's been too long. I don't think I could. But I've got something here that says I'm entitled to a dance. Okay, follow me. It looked like I'd given the right answers. A 
And Mr. Smith is busy at the moment. I wait. Won't you sit here, please? Thanks. It'll speed things up a little if I ask you a few questions while we're waiting. You don't mind? Not at all. Your name? Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton. Such a nice name. I'm glad you like it. Now, port of entry? New York? New Orleans, San Francisco? Detroit? I'd rather not say. Good. Port of entry? Unspecified. But this is a foreign case, isn't it? I mean, it isn't an internal affair. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, no, it's, uh, it's not an internal affair. Does every man tell you how beautiful you look, uh, Miss... Uh... Hamilton. Alexandra Hamilton. Oh, yes. Men tell me how beautiful I am until sometimes I get quite sick in my stomach. Does that answer your question? Miss Hamilton, I love you. I love you too, Mr. Hamilton. Can you give me an estimate of the length of time you intend to spend at Copper Mountain? Copper Mountain? Oh, the, the length of time? Well, it's hard to say, you see. Uh, time is relative. Time is very, very relative. Yes, yes, but accommodations at Copper Mountain Lodge are limited. Even for the biggest men, we've simply got to know how long we intend to stay. Yes? Come in here. I'll be right in. So that's what the letter CNL meant. Copper Mountain Lodge. I was listening to the dialogue. through the mountains like a tangled string. If you had something to hide, where could you find a better place? The mountain is honeycombed with abandoned mine tunnels. Copper Mountain Lodge was at the top. Sorry, sir. I'm afraid I don't have a thing. Oh? And I've come a long way for nothing. Yeah, you can have this. If that's all it means, I don't need it. Oh. Why didn't you say so in the first place, instead of all of this yakety yak? Did you leave the keys in the car? Yeah. Got any luggage? No. Oh, that's all right. We can take care of you. Anything you need. Right now, I'm going to frisk you, so just stand still and take it easy. Okay? Okay. 138 automatic. We'll keep this in the vault until you're ready to leave. Rules of the house. Makes everybody happier that way. You can call me Fred. You got a name you like? Got one you like. Okay, Jones, the place is yours. What do you want? We can have a drink, a dip in a pool. It's heated. Wait a minute. You just took my gun away. But if that bulge under your coat means anything, you're carrying one. Why, sure. Just like the rest of the boys that work around here. You'll get used to it. Everybody does. I see. Got a 
a phone I can use. There, the first thing you want is something we haven't got. Maybe there's one nearby, huh? There's nothing nearby, Jones, nothing, including a phone. And if there was, you couldn't use it. Oh. Once you're in, you're in. No one's allowed to leave this lodge without Mr. Calvin's permission. And Mr. Calvin isn't here right now. He's due back sometime tonight. Your room will be ready in a half hour. Okay. Make yourself at home. I will. I'll just walk around. The clerk had said, Mr. Calvin, and that name rang a bell. We had met in the Blue Lantern in New York. I still ached from it. I knew only one thing. I wanted to see him, but I didn't want him to see me. Copper Mountain Lodge wasn't just a hideout. It was a concentration point, a meeting place for the world's top criminals. A place where, for the first time in history, they could get together and organize rackets on a wholesale basis. And of course, the simple copper key was the passport. I had carefully covered every inch of the lodge and grounds for another way out, because I had a hunch that later I wouldn't get a second chance. Copper Mountain, they provided everything for your pleasure. I found myself sitting down the bar from a girl who, with great moderation, could be described as a beauty. I had been told she was a special friend of Mr. Calvin's. She was trying to be friendly to me. I made it easier for her. You mind if I join you? Yeah. How about a table? All right. here? I don't know. Would it make any difference to you? Might. They tell me you're Calvin's girl. Do you always believe the things you're told? Not always. Where do you come from? Why are you here? Oh, I, I know I shouldn't ask. You're right. I don't know why, but you interest me. You're like the man that operates this place. I uh, hope that's a compliment. Well, why do we talk about Calvin? Do you know Mr. Calvin? No, I've heard of him. If you knew him, you'd understand. I don't care who you are or how hard you try. You can't break his rules. Anything can be changed. Even life is uncertain. You're poking fun at me. Oh, but I wasn't. I just thought we might break a couple of rules. Do you know a girl named Amy Lou? Amy Lou? Is she better looking than I am? Tell me the truth. I don't know who you're talking about, but I'm certain you're better looking. Doing? Oh, uh, sometimes I take this when I wake up in the middle of the night. <laughs> You're a character. <laughs> I've heard that before. Well, there's Mr. Calvin. I think he's looking for me. He's deaf, poor thing. I'd wave at him, but it makes him sort of self-conscious. Pardon me. I'll be back in a moment. you were talking to? I don't know. He's new, isn't he? I had prepared for Mr. Calvin. A little sugar in the gasoline tank and the best motor in the world becomes just a useless hunk of metal. I hadn't been able to find another way out, so if there was more than one way, Calvin was going to show me. Even in the dark, I couldn't miss that white suit. Someone down to the engine room. I don't like it. Get me out of here and well, stop talking out of what you're saying. Riley, you wait here. I'm frightened. Take it easy, everybody. We'll have the lights on in a moment. The tunnel.
Turn the flashlight on, Fred. I'll follow you. Go ahead. we go. You didn't fool me, Lanyard. Not when some of that light bounced off the walls onto your face. Nevertheless, I want to thank you for getting me here. Only Fred and I know about this tunnel. They'll find your bones here a thousand years from now. After it was over, I called the local police. They took care of the rest.